Welcome to this tutorial about using a Redport Global Router for email and web browsing on an Iridium open port system, presented by Dr. Louis Soltero, PhD, MCS, CTO and President of Global Marine Networks and Redport Global. GMN's products and services are used worldwide, and the following training contains excerpts from a Skype call between the United States and Australia. Although this is typical of GMN's global service coverage, the vast distance of this particular call resulted in occasional audio noise and echo. Regardless, the information is clear and concise and helpful. Now, here's Dr. Soltero. You bought a WXH 303. It's exactly like the WXH 202, which is depicted here except that it has three Ethernet ports. The center Ethernet port is the WAN port that gets connected to the Iridium open port. And then, of course, uh, you'll have 12 volt, a 12 volt lead, which will get connected into the boat. If you look at the Iridium open port, which is depicted right here, um, it has a below the decks unit. It also runs on 12 volts. Um, it comes with an AC adapter, so that will be wired into the vessel. It has one Ethernet port. That one Ethernet port will get connected to the center port on the router and then you'll power everything up. There is a SIM card that comes with the unit. It's already been inserted. We will activate that for you. So as soon as we activate that for you, you should be able to make phone calls with the unit and actually use it for data. Although you need to do some basic configuration and I'm gonna go through that right now here in a second. There are three telephone jacks here. Your system comes with two analog phones. They'll be in the box. Uh, just take one of the analog phones, probably the one that says Captain and then just plug it into one of the ports. There's three ports there. Um, we will uh, assign a, a postpaid or captain calling on one of the ports, and then crew calling on the other port so that you can take the crew calling phone, put it in the crew calling jack, so you decide to buy the pin codes to do the prepaid calling, which is the least expensive way to do voice calling, then you'll have that option available to you. Once you've got the router hooked up and the open port hooked up, you will need to configure the open port. The open port comes configured so that it does not hand out IP addresses. And so you'll have to take a look at the manual and you'll have to hook up your PC directly to the open port before you hook it up to the router and configure it as I tell you. This is a little tricky and we've talked to Rudim about this, but when you hook up a PC directly to the open port the very first time and power it on, the PC will not be able to connect to the open port because the open port is not configured for something called DHCP. And so you have to go through some steps to set up your PC for static IP addressing so that you can then communicate with the open port. So um, I'm just gonna show you real quickly on Windows how you do that. This is described in the open port manual, but let me just go through that very quickly with you so that you can basically see how that operation will be done. Okay, so uh, you should now see a Windows PC. This is one day Windows 2000, so um, you'll be running Windows 7 or Windows XP or something, but the procedure is pretty similar. If you go to the control panel and on Windows XP or Windows 2000, you would go to network and dial up connections, and then you would go to your local area connection and go to properties. Once you're in properties, you would go to TCP IP control and TCP IP internet protocol and go to properties. Uh, what you would do is you would go here and you would say, uh, typically you have obtain IP address automatically. For the setup for the open port, you gotta say, you gotta use a manual setup. And for your IP address, you'll enter 192.168.0. Two should work just fine and uh, 192.168.0.1. So you would just do this, you would hit OK. Um, again, this is described in the open port installation manual, but this is where you would do this in the control panel. You would enter the 192.168.0.2 for your, your IP address, 255.255.255.0 for the subnet, and then 192.168.0.1 for the default gateway. And mm -hmm. hit OK. And then once you do that, you'll be able to connect to the Iridium open port. And the way you do that is to open up a web browser. You would just enter in the address bar, HTTP 192.168.0.1 and hit enter. And you'll get the login screen for the Iridium open port. Okay. 
Now, it all looks very intimidating, yeah. but it's not that hard to do, and you've got instructions in the manual that come with it. But the key thing here is that you have to set your static IP address so that you're able to address the open port. Um, you just need to set your static IP address, bring up the browser, and then log into the open port to do the configuration that I'm going to show you right now. Once you're done with the changes that you will be making to the open port, you're just going to go back to obtain IP address automatically and put things back the way they were. Now, I don't have an open port live to show you right now, but I did do a screen capture of the primary screen that I wanted to show you. This is the Iridium open port um, admin page that you will see when you go to 192.168.0.1 and you'll notice that at the address bar at the top of this screenshot, which by the way is Firefox, you see 192.168.0.1. And so when you go to that, you will log in and the username is admin and the password is admin and you will get to this page. When you get to this page, you need to click on configuration, which is on the left hand side, and you need to do two things. You need to put a check mark next to use as a DHCP server, and then you put a check mark next to use DNS forwarding and you hit save. As soon as you put those two check marks in there and you hit save, your read them open port will automatically hand out DHCP IP addresses. So you can now hook the router, hook up PCs to it, and it'll automatically configure the PC so that you can browse and access the internet. Okay, so now you're all set up. So what you're going to do then is you come back to here, you take the Ethernet connector, the data connector, and connect it to the center port of the firewall. Either hook to this via Wi-Fi or hook to it via an Ethernet cable to your PC. Uh, there is a quick start sheet that comes with the WXA203, which shows you how to Wi-Fi connect to the unit. But it's as simple as just finding the um, the hotspot in your Wi-Fi choices and then connecting to it and then just putting in the password and logging into it. The default password for the Wi-Fi connection is web X, and that's capital X, accelerator. That's the Wi-Fi password. The Login password for the router itself, and that's the, the GUI where you're going to be doing the administration, and I'm going to show you that here in a half a second, is a username is admin, and the password is uh, WebX access. Again, that will be included in the documentation. So this is the um, Wi-Fi Wi SSID is WebX accelerator and the um, key is that so um, the key and the password are exactly the same for the units and this is for the um, router and this is going to be at 192 10.1 so that's the IP address of the uh, router admin and uh, the username and the password for the router admin and then the SSID and the key are for the Wi-Fi and of course, you can change all of that. So the next thing I want to do then is I want to go and show you how to configure this thing. 